gathering with someone to watch church online today, why don't you turn to them and just say, are you ready? I hope that you're ready. Hey, you know, when I started this year, 2020, I thought that I was ready. I thought that I was ready for an incredible year. I came in with all great expectations for what God was going to do. As that clock ticked over on the night of December 31st last year, and I came into January 1, I was like, man, we're going into a brand new decade. We're going into something amazing. We're going into a new era, a new time. I was so excited for what God was going to do in me. I was so excited for the plans I had for this year, for what my family had for this year, for what my church, Nations Church, had for this year. I had so much expectation for what God was going to do. And who would have thought on New Year's Day that in just a few months' time, we're going to find ourselves in the middle of a global pandemic? And all of those expectations, all of those plans have changed. And now... The expectations that I had to be maybe going on holidays with my family, they're not going to happen anymore. Now those expectations of even just doing normal day-to-day life, they're not happening so much anymore. There's these expectations and these plans, they've, they've changed, they've, they've shifted. I bet you didn't start this year expecting that you were going to be in lockdown, expecting that you're going to be in isolation. I bet you didn't start this year expecting to have to homeschool your kids. Praise God for our teachers, right? Amen. Amen. I bet you didn't come into this year expecting that you're going to have to make some elaborate plan just to ensure that you could keep the toilet paper supply at your house up to speed. There's so many plans, so many expectations we had for this year that haven't been met, but there's all these other things that have happened that have been completely unexpected. It's been a really strange start to this year and there's been so much that hasn't gone to plan. And so today I want to open up scripture in Matthew chapter 8 and I want to speak to you from an account in there where the disciples come across something that they just don't expect. And we're going to pick up from verse 23. And it says this, it says, Now when Jesus got into a boat that his disciples followed him, And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he, Jesus, was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and they woke him saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and he rebuked the winds and the sea and there was a great calm. And so the men marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Jesus is with his disciples here. They're they're in the town of Capernaum, and he decides they're going to travel from the Sea of Galilee from one side to the other. And you can imagine the disciples' excitement, their expectation as they're getting into the boat with Jesus. They've just spent the day with him, and he, they have seen him perform miracles. He has cleansed lepers. He's delivered people of demonic oppression. He's healed their bodies. And now they're getting into a boat with this miracle-working, incredible God. And he is taking them to the other side. You can imagine their expectation, their excitement as they're getting into the boat and they're thinking, wow, we get to spend this time with Jesus. And then out of nowhere comes this storm. Like the disciples in this storm, like the year has presented to us this year, life can throw storms at us unexpectedly. Everything that we expected can shift and change in a moment. This coronavirus and all the issues arising out of it were unexpected for everyone, but the storms of life can come up in any area. Perhaps the storm for you right now is a diagnosis that you've got. Perhaps a storm for you right now is a relationship that you're in. Perhaps your job is a storm for you right now. Perhaps there is somebody in your life that is a storm for you right now. However they come upon you, the storms of life have the ability to make, go take you from feeling you've got everything in hand to feeling like it's completely out of control and going to a place of fear. When the disciples encountered this storm, they they go to Jesus in the boat and they say, Lord, save us, we're perishing. 
You know, my prayers in the storms of life have often been like that. They've been like, God, take me out of this storm. My prayers have been, God, remove me from this situation. Remove me from this hard time. Take me out of it. I don't want to go through it. Just remove me from this situation. Remove me from this storm. Perhaps you have had that approach too. When you've been in the storms of your life, you say, God, just take me out of this relationship. God, just take me out of being single. I don't want to be in that situation anymore. God, take me out of this illness. Take me out of this job. Take me away from that person or remove them from my life. And so our prayers and our our desires, the things of our heart, is just that we want to see God take us out of the storm. We want him to take us around the storm. We want to avoid the storm. God, just do something, but don't make me go through this storm. Don't make me have to endure it. And, you know, you've got to ask yourself the question, why did Jesus take the disciples through this storm? Why did he take them through this storm? He must have known it was coming, right? And still he leads them into this boat and he takes them through this storm. But you see, if you you look at Jesus' life, we see that he invested so much time in these disciples. In fact, authors believe he spent half of the time in his public ministry, just him and his disciples, He's investing in them. He's discipling them. He's raising them up to be the men of God they were called to be, to be formed into the kind of people who could carry his message to all the four corners of the world. And so Jesus saw this storm as a discipleship moment. Jesus saw this storm as an opportunity to form something powerful in the lives of his disciples. And so I want to speak to you today on the thought, formed in the storm. In Romans 5.3, Paul wrote this. He said, not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. This word tribulation refers to coming under an intense pressure. If you lived in New Testament times, it would give you this picture of what the kind of pressure that an olive would come under to bring out the oil or a grape would come under so that the juice could be extracted. It was an intense pressure that produced something of great value. You see, the juice from the grape and the oil from the olive were valued commodities in those times. And this intense pressure would bring about something of value. That's why Paul talks about this. He says, it's something that we can glory in knowing what this tribulation will produce in us. That when we become under that great pressure, that there is something valuable produced in our lives. That there is a productivity available to us in the storm. And no, you know, I'm not talking about that COVID-19 isolation productivity that we've all been putting on our social media feeds. I'm not talking about making bread. I'm not talking about cinnamon scrolls. I'm not talking about your DIY home renovation. I'm not talking about your home workout. I'm talking about the kind of spiritual productivity where God gets busy in your life, forming something incredible in you as you go through the storm. It is in those storms that God wants to form something incredible in us. But you know, however, when we go through a storm, just going through it doesn't guarantee that God's going to be able to produce something great in our lives. Perhaps you know somebody, or maybe you are that person, you've been through a storm and you've come out the other side and to be honest, it's not produced great things in you. Perhaps you're feeling disappointed or defeated by that storm. Perhaps it's left you feeling broken. Perhaps it's left you feeling like you just can't deal with another one. But can I encourage you today that God can still form something in you, that he has an intention to be productive in your life. But what you need to know about going through a storm, it is that your response to the storm determines what it forms in you. 
that your response to the storm can determine how God can work in your life as you go through it. You see, Jesus didn't rebuke the disciples in that boat because they woke him up. He didn't rebuke them because they had disturbed him. He rebuked them because of their response. He says to them, why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Why are you fearful? They had responded in fear. If you look at the meaning of that word fearful, it means somebody who loses their moral gumption, somebody who's lost their fortitude. In Aussie slang, we would say it's someone who's lost the guts just to keep on going through the storm and to continue to follow the Lord and make it to the other side. You see, Jesus in this moment, when he was discipling them, when he was forming something new in them, he was showing them that they needed to place their dependence on him. They'd become fearful and faint-hearted because they were looking at the storm and judging their ability to come through on their own ability to handle it, not on God's ability. The disciples' response in the face of the storm showed that they had neglected to consider that the very one who had performed all those miracles that day was in the boat right next to them. He was right there with them. And so Jesus was showing them in this storm that they could simply rely on him, know that he is with them and that they didn't need to fear that he would bring them through. Our right response to the storm is not that we would yield to the storm, but that we would yield to God in the storm. When my children were young, I went through a storm. I went through a storm in my personal life. I struggled in that time through those first couple of years to really keep my attention focused on what was good, keep my attention focused on what was God. And so I found myself in this place where I would have a lot of dark thoughts about myself and and a lot of dark thoughts about my situation. And, you know, through that 12 months, 18 months, I would cry out to God and ask him, God, take me out of this storm. God, remove this thing, this this darkness from my life. Help me to come and find that place of positivity and and light again. Help me to shift my perspective. And as I struggled through that time, you know, I got really busy trying to make everything right, trying to present a perfect face, trying to be the one who could hold it all together. I determined to stay in control and to manage the situation in my own ability. But it was when I yielded to God... It was when I said to him, you know what, God, I can't do this in my own ability. I can't get through this season on my own. It was when I yielded to him and said, God, you show me what to do. You lead me through this situation that things began to shift and things began to change. And, you know, when I look back through my journals over that time, I find entry after entry after entry where God spoke to me as I laid in my bed at night, where God come and ministered to me as I was in church or or at a prayer meeting, where God directed and led my life. He was the one who brought me through as I yielded to him. He brought me through to the other side. David writes about traveling through a storm in Psalm 23. He doesn't call it a storm. He talks about it as a valley. In Psalm 23, he says this. He says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff they comfort me. Just like a storm, a valley represents a place of being surrounded. It represents a place of being hedged in by your circumstances. It's a place you can easily go to fear in. It's a place where you struggle to see your way out. But David says, when I was in that place of the valley, I didn't fear because God was with me. I didn't fear because his rod and his staff, they comforted me. What's a rod and a staff? A rod is a stick that a shepherd used to guide his sheep. 
A staff is something he used to protect them. You see, it was as David yielded to the rod of God, as David yielded to his staff, it was as he did those things that God could lead him through the storm and through that valley and bring him to the other side. You see, as we yield to God's rod of guidance, as we yield to his staff of protection, that is where we will find God's will and God's heart for us when we are in the storm and he brings us through to the other side. You see, God has a purpose for your valley. God has a purpose for your storm. He wants to build in you a reliance on him. He wants to take you through this process of formation. In Hebrews 12, Paul talks about this process, but he calls it training. In Hebrews 12, 11, he says, Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Now, I'm not in training these days, but there was a time when I went to the gym. And often when I was there, I would wonder, why am I paying so much money just to inflict pain on myself? Because that's the thing about training. It's painful. In the moment, it is painful. It's painful because it takes you outside of what you can do comfortably. It's painful because it places a demand on your fitness. It places a demand on your muscles. It places a demand on parts of your body that you didn't even know you had and expects them to do more than what they've done before. And it's in that place of demand that muscle is built. It is in that place of demand that fitness grows. It is in that place of demand that you find strength and that new things are formed in you. This is the power of the formation that God does in you as you are going through the storm with him. He has something amazing for you in the storm. It's hard to believe when you're in the pain. It's hard to see outside of it. But as you journey through the storm, what you need to do is allow the pain of your present to train you for your future. Let me say that again. Allow the pain of your present to train you for your future. You know, I've heard our senior pastor, Ken Lee, say often recently, never waste a good crisis. Just like there is purpose behind your training, there is purpose in your pain. There is purpose in your storm. When you trust God and you yield to him, the storm never goes to waste. God will form something in you that will yield that peaceable fruit of righteousness in your life. Scripture says that we may mourn at night, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. That work of formation, it takes time. It doesn't happen in the moment, but you will see what happens from that training as you come out the other side. You know, my children, when they were small, they they were eating apples one day and they found the seeds inside the apple. And so they took those seeds and we planted them in the backyard. And that afternoon, they were running in and out of the house to the backyard and then back inside, in and out, in and out. And I said to them, what are you doing? And they said to me, we're going to see if the apple tree has grown yet. You know, there's a great preacher called Charles Spurgeon and he says this, He says, only little children put their seeds in the garden and then expect them to grow plants within the hour. You know, it's a sign of our maturity that we can go through the storm, that we can go through the pain and that we can press through with God and wait to see the fruit of that time come forward in our lives, that we can wait and see what God is going to form in us on the other side. It doesn't happen in the moment, but you'll see what grows in you as those seeds are planted during the storm. You'll see them grow in you and formed in you as you come out the other side. You know, there's an account in scripture about a young man called David. And many of you will know this story. David fought against a giant called Goliath. He was a shepherd boy 
and he was working in the field looking after his father's sheep when his father said to him, come take this food to your brothers who are out in the battle. And so he went out to the battleground with that food for his brothers. And when he got there, he was surprised by what he saw. When he got there, he saw a giant called Goliath who would come out every day and start to taunt his nation's army, start to taunt the Israelite people. And so the Israelites had backed off in fear. And when David saw that, he decided and determined in himself that he was going to be the one to go into battle against this giant and to bring him down. And though the battle was tipped in Goliath's favor, for some reason, David just seemed to know that God was going to bring the victory. And what was that reason? Well, we can see it in what he said as he stepped forward up to the challenge. He said this in 1 Samuel 17 and verse 37. He says, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. When we read this account of David, we know what the outcome was. But David was a real person living through this event in real time. He was coming up against a giant who exceeded him by far in strength, who exceeded him by far in experience, yet he came up against that giant with great confidence. He came up against that giant certain that he was going to exceed. When he faced that lion and he faced that bear in the past, he didn't know that what God was going to form in him in that storm with the lion and that storm with the bear was going to set him up to take down a giant in his future. He didn't know that as he faced that situation, which perhaps nearly took his life, that he was going to be able to, down the track, bring down a giant that had held his nation's army in fear. His past pain had trained him for that moment. That storm he faced with the lion and the bear had formed in him a reliance on God that caused him to step out when everyone else was afraid, that caused him to pick up his sling when everyone else was retreating, that caused him to see a victory when everyone else thought they were doomed. In the same way, you don't know how your present pain is going to train you to bring down a future giant. You don't know how your present pain is forming something in you that's going to bring you through that storm in your future, who's going to bring you against that giant in your future. You don't know how the way you yield to God in the storm is going to produce such a righteousness in you, such a faith in you, such a resilience in you and a strength that the giants that come are going to be taken down one after the other because you have yielded to God in the storm. You know, when we go back and read that Hebrews 12, 11 scripture, and it talks about that peaceable fruit of righteousness. In my Amplified Bible, which gives me a, a greater definition, it says this. It says that peaceable fruit of righteousness is a harvest of fruit which consists in righteousness. It consists in conformity to God's will in purpose, thought, and action. It results in right living and right standing with God. When we yield to God in the storm, it brings us into alignment with Him. When we yield to God in the storm, it brings us back into the boat with Him that He can carry us through to the other side. You know, I have a testimony of how yielding to God brought me back into alignment with Him. When I was in my teens, I found myself in, in a relationship with a guy of my age who well, to be honest, the two of us, we were just really broken. And as we had journeyed through that relationship together, our brokenness just created one big mess. And I struggled 
day in, day out with this relationship. And I prayed that God would just take me out of it. I prayed that God would just remove it from my life. I was uncertain how to deal with it. I was a teenager. I was uncertain how to make it so that I would be right again and my life would be right again. My life was completely out of alignment with God. But it was when I yielded to Him. It was in that moment where God changed my whole perspective and I could see that all it would take would be for me to yield to Him, allow His rod and His staff to guide me and that He would bring me to the other side. And you know He did. He brought me out the other side of that relationship and He sent my life into alignment with Him. He brought me back into purpose. He brought me back into a safe place. He brought me back on solid ground. All because He carried me through the storm. You know, that's the kind of assurance we can find in doing life with Jesus. That's the kind of assurance we can find that it doesn't matter whether things are going well for us right now or if we're in a storm right now, that God is going to bring us through, that He has a purpose to form something incredible in our lives and bring us into His purpose and bring us into all of the great things that He has for us in our future. And so perhaps you are in a storm right now. Perhaps things have happened in your life that have left you reeling. Perhaps there are things that are happening in your life that are causing you to flounder, that are causing you to fear, to become faint-hearted, to lose your grip on what to do with your life. And if that's you, can I tell you that Jesus is here to do life with you, that Jesus is here to bring your life into alignment with His, that Jesus is here to bring you through to the other side. And the first step in you doing that is for you to invite Jesus to come into your life. The Bible says that we do that by simply believing in our heart and speaking out with our mouth that Jesus is Lord of our lives. And so if you are within the sound of my voice right now and you're saying, thinking to yourself, yeah, you know, that's me. I want to get my life in alignment with Jesus. I want to start to do life with Him. I want Him to be the one that I turn to. I want Him to be the one that brings me through the storms of life. I want Him to be the one that carries me through every situation I'm going to face. Then can I invite you right now to invite Jesus into your life by saying this simple prayer with me. I'm just going to say one phrase at a time and then you repeat it back. Let's do that right now. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Today, I invite you into my life. Make me new and lead me and guide me in your ways. Bring me through the good and bring me through the bad. I give my life to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, that is the best decision that you could ever make. And we would love to journey with you as you find out more about Jesus and who He is for you. So can I encourage you, go to our website and click on the link that says My Decision. When you do that, we will send you an e-pack that'll help you along your way and our team will get in touch with you to talk to you and, and help you and encourage you in your journey with Jesus. You know, today I've shared with you about the storms of life. And I want to encourage you right now not to switch off, not to walk away. Because I believe that the Holy Spirit is with you right now where you are. And that He wants to do a work in you. 
He wants to form something new in you. So can I invite you, perhaps if you're sitting and you can, why don't you stand and just start to engage with the worship. If you're sitting, just start to engage with the presence of God because He wants to do something in you. You know, I talked to you today about yielding to God in the storm. This is your moment to yield to Him. He's the one who can make a way. He's the one that can bring you through. Just close your eyes. Engage with Him. Come on, let's sing. 